one time where I actually physically tried to kill my friend Rob Roy. And uh, sorry, Rob Roy, for that. <laughs> but I wrote this um, called Socks 2, Motherfuckers. <laughs> okay, so it's a pretty short little story here. I wanted to document this before he left. Oh, this, yeah, this is a good Okay, I was hungry. I was like really fucking hungry and I was drunk. Like really drunk. So I ate the first thing available, which for better or for worse, were two bags of mushrooms that someone had given me to hold on to. In my defense, I did hold on to them for quite some time. <laughs> but then I ate them. Uh, things shortly after that were interesting in a psychedelic sort of way. And then they got really fucked up. <laughs> we sat in the park and I stared up into the trees and they looked more evil than I had remembered them. <laughs> Branches like forked tongues licking at the moon. <laughs> Listen to conversations about fucking, whispers which I didn't quite understand. And then there was the strangely stereotypical Native American dude <laughs> who showed up and just stood there. And he was looming over everybody like a totem pole. And that's when my mind really started to go sour. <laughs> But the night really began when I saw Gary Busey. <laughs> it's true. And the mentally ill actor who played Buddy Holly in the Buddy Holly story. He was in a tree filming everybody for his government surveillance. <laughs> That's true, right, Rob? <laughs> Somewhere in between telling the Indian dude that he was creeping everybody out and that he had to go and the walk back to Rob's house, the mushrooms violently turned on me. The paranoia was overwhelming. I could see video cameras in the bushes, and everywhere I looked was Gary motherfucking Busey filming me for his government tape. And I tried to keep my cool. I did. Uh, when we got to Rob's house, Lisa Davis was on the couch with a guitar strumming folk music, and it sounded awful, and I told her to stop. But she kept playing, and everyone was ignoring me. I looked in the mirror to see if I was there. And I was. But so was the camera behind the glass. It was a government camera, so I did the reasonable thing and took it off the wall and shattered it. That confused people. And they started to scatter. I ran to the door to lock everybody in so they couldn't finish their government project. My plan was to kidnap and kill them all. Lisa was still playing her guitar. Shut the fuck up, I yelled. so I hoisted it above my head and smashed it on the ground. People stopped ignoring me. Dan, Dan and Rob escorted me outside. Me and Dan got in a tussle and I fell on my ass. Dan was stronger than I thought. He was a fucking government clone. And he didn't even realize it. The government trains you in karate and other badass shit. Which is why he kicked my ass. People started crying. Dan told me to fuck off and went inside, and Rob told me to calm down. I ran away, but I could hear Rob running after me, so I hid under a car. <laughs> under the car was dark and scary as all fuck, so I came out. What are you doing? asked Rob, and I wasn't sure. I ran to the university mall. Rob got up in my face trying to calm me down with his government tactics. <laughs> to his kind eyes filled with love. It was then when I wanted to choke him to death. So I put my hands around his neck and began to strangle him. Take off your clothes! I yelled. It was the only way to expose him to the government clone he was. Rob began to strip down. He took off his pants, his shirt, his shoes, his underwear, and I didn't see any wires. Sucks too, motherfucker!
was so high from the mushrooms that I called the police on myself and begged them to take me to jail, but they never came. The next day when I woke up, I felt like I had ruined my life. All my belongings were on Rob's lawn, and Dan and his girlfriend wanted nothing to do with me, and everyone was crying. As I packed my stuff into my car, I wept, thinking that I'd lost Rob forever. His computer was shattered into pieces, and my heart felt like it had been taken out and someone had fucked it in its aortic hole. <laughs> it's been almost five years since that night. Somehow, Rob is still my greatest friend. Rob Roy understands life and its hilarious brutality. He is sensitive to the nuances of a complicated existence which renders him an expert on love and its wild inconsistency. I stripped him nude, disposed of his clothes, broke his computer, fucked his mom, and made him cry. And he still loves me. Okay, I didn't fuck his mom yet.